One of the reasons people love fox shooting is it can be so challenging. There are so many factors to be taken into consideration, especially at night. Your decision making process has to be fast and safe. Today we are going to conduct a little experiment to see how shooters can improve their fox shooting technique. We have Tom, the novice, who has very little rifle experience and has never shot a fox. And we have Roy, who has accounted for quite a few. Tim Pillbeam, rifle reviewer for Sporting Rifle magazine, is in charge. He's come up with a cunning plan to challenge the young apprentice and tax the old hand. So tonight it's all about the ABCs of fox shooting. We're shooting different foxes, different ranges, in different situations. So it's safety, range, decision making and dealing with the, the light. So what do you think the range is going to be on that one? So especially for Roy, I'll be asking many questions. How far is it Roy? How safe is it Roy? And also with Tom, I'll, we'll be able to guiding him to make sure that he actually does shoot the fox in a very, very safe and correct method. This is a typical target we're shooting at tonight, a bit of plywood. I paint it black and we've got a very, very typical sized fox here. Uh, four inches by ten inches is the normal kill zone of a fox. Um, so this is what we'll be practicing tonight. I've got a couple of um, bicycle reflectors there to, to show his eyes. And for a bit of fun tonight is we're going to see if we can get these guys to start shooting uh, these exploding targets. And that would be quite exciting to see at night time. Tim right. drives us around the course in daylight to get the lay of the land and to talk us through a few of the targets. This is a typical well. foxing situation. We've got two foxes here, one in the alleyway and one next to the telegraph pole. One in the alleyway is about 120 yards away, the one near the telegraph pole is about 170 yards away. Both really straightforward shots, but we need to get a decent position to shoot them. Do we use a tree? Do we actually put the bipod on the, on the bonnet here? Or do we lay down in the grass and use the, the bipod in a prone position? For the last of the targets of the evening, he is giving the guys something a bit more tricky. The ones we've got in front of me at the moment, they're about 220 yards away. But the problem is, is they are they're head on, they're front on, these foxes, quite narrow. The kill zone of a fox when it's sitting down in front of you is about six inches wide. So they've got to make sure they get that shot bang on. I say it's 220 yards away, so really they should be aiming right at, at, the, at the kill zone. And it doesn't stop there. Tim is really going to try and simulate the unpredictability of the quarry and possibly the erratic yeah, technique of the lamp man. What I will be doing is flashing the spotlight around. Sometimes I'll be taking it off the fox, sometimes I'll be putting it on the fox, and just before they shoot, I'll take it off the fox. And that's what happens in fox shooting. Also, sometimes if you flash light around, around you, your eyes get um, blinded. So, so the light is very, very important. Also, I'll be sometimes putting the light on the fox and then say one, two, three and take it off. Very often the foxes, they don't stand that long. They stand for about five or ten seconds and then they move on again. So it's very important to get uh, uh, the crosshairs on the fox, make a decision and shoot it. Some targets will appear as we climb over the brow of a hill and others will offer some more choice to get into a stable position. Bonnet, post or prone for this one. We've got to decide here what we While we have been scooting around this simulated foxing course on Tim's farm and uh, practice range, Roy has been giving Tom some in. tuition. He spots something which, if caught early, can be easily remedied. Right. You are, when you're shooting, yeah. you're, you're expecting the, the shot, yeah? So when you shot there, you went like that, so you're, you're actually twitching slightly okay so you if you when you're watching when you're watching your eye your eye blinked okay and it should okay. you should just you should stay in contact with the target at all times so when you squeeze okay just try just concentrate on looking straight through and look at and concentrate on the target so right. when the round goes off when the shot goes off yeah. then you should still see the target and you should still see the, the shot hit okay okay so yeah. what you did what you did then you you blinked and you, you just twitched slightly okay. Tim also gives Tom some tips and finds out just how much experience he has. So, so Tom, tell me about your first deer you shot. The first deer was up in Scotland. We went up to an estate just uh, 45 miles above Inverness in the hill. Um, it was a red hind, uh -huh. um, which was shot uh, the distance about 150 yards. Um, that was a 30 6 OK, brilliant. Uh, yeah. yeah it good. And tell me more about your rifle. Um, it's a 708 Remington rifle with a... 
um, quite a heavy barrel on it and obviously quite a heavy moderator as well. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's right to say this is an all round um, rifle. It was shoot, obviously you can shoot deer with it, you can shoot foxes with it. Uh, so it's a very capable round. It's in 708, which is a, a very good all round calibre. Yeah. Um, so the idea was it, it sort of fits everything. You can shoot everything from foxes up to deer and anything I'd want to shoot from here, really. Before we lose the light and the fun begins, Roy and Tom have a few more shots. Both are now happy with their setup, but there's still plenty to go through. From having one up the spout. And I think in the, in the vehicle, Bolts open basically. Yeah, simple as that, I think, really. To the magnification you're happy with, to spotting these cunning foxes. Right, we're off, and they just can't help themselves. Roy starts blowing, and foxes, three real ones that is, come hunting. Tom is told to get into position. Already there are errors, and we lose two of the interested foxes. With our remaining fox at 250 yards, Tim takes over, shooting from the buggy frame. Sounds right, yeah. The shot sounds good. So hold on. What happened to the simulated night? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very interesting because Roy, Roy the boy, got his wonderful squeaker out, and immediately we pulled. We actually pulled in one to us to our north here. One down the bottom here, down the bottom of the farm, and also we had one down just down over here as well. So we had three contenders. Now, first of all, we stopped. We stopped in the wrong place, unfortunately, my fault. And we couldn't actually get onto them at all. So we moved the, the, the buggy over here, and Roy kept on squeaking, and uh, we actually found a real one, which is quite exciting. So that's probably about 250 yards, I think, wasn't it, Roy? Yeah, 250. 250 yards. What was interesting as well, actually, is earlier on, we had a couple of uh, eyes over the back here which looked very, very similar to that of a fox. There's one slight problem, is the eyes were on top of the hedge. So I don't think it was actually a fox, but uh, it just shows you how careful you've got to be. And you must know your land. And I knew exactly that was on top of the hedge, so there's no way I can shoot that. But uh, you had to be very careful at night. But a good start, guys. Well done. Excellent. Bullet goes straight through the shoulder and out the other side. Yeah, nice looking animal, actually. It's quite a small fox. But uh, best fox is a dead fox, as far as I can say. So, points to remember here are don't step in front of the lamp, don't choose an unstable rest, Tom picked a duff post to lean on, and of course don't make too much noise, which everyone is guilty of. I mean, that was an absolutely perfect example of what not to do when you're out foxing. We had people sort of, you know, fumbling about all over the place, lights going all over the place, um, and as a consequence it cost us the foxes. We had one fox coming right into us. Um, and just because we weren't sure and there was a bit of fumbling and a bit of noise, the fox came in, made us and, and was off again. Right back to the simulated animals. These are the ones over the brow. Tom shoots off the frame. Roy goes for the bipod on the bonnet. Both the guys have hit the kill zone, but one of Tom's shots Great is pulled shot. to the right. Next shot. up are the pair of foxes near the post. Tim gives them ten seconds to shoot. There are firebirds on these targets. Roy, the spoil sport, nabs both his and Tom's. Naughty. Well, there's three shots here, which tells me that some person's been shooting the wrong target. Lupton. <laughs> the shots are still good, even if greedy Lupton has taken both foxes. So what does Tom think so far? First time I've actually shot at a target prone in the dark, so mm. the whole thing was a sort of new experience, really. Yeah. But so how do you find the light? Because the light was I, oh, the light was kind of moving a wee bit. Yeah, that didn't bother me too much. I was just trying to get my um, my crosshairs in the middle of the two um, cat's eyes looking at me, yeah, or yeah. fox eyes in this case. Um, so the the light didn't wasn't too distracting at all, really. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people think the foxing they is easy, but it's actually an awful lot to consider. I, thought that was a lot harder actually. I've always thought the idea of lamping is you, get, you see the fox under the lamp and you, but you, it's completely different, you don't. You see the no. two little spots looking at you. And, yeah. 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 The next two targets are the one in the track and its neighbour. Range is an issue here and the shooting sticks also cause problems. Last but one are the targets we first looked at in daylight. Tom has a real problem here but Roy is in his comfort zone and the little tinker even shoots one of Tim's reflectors. You have a shot with my eyes. <laughs> Last up are the head-on foxes. Tom is again struggling. It's getting late and we're all tired. Tim takes over and sees the last firebird go bang. So what do the chaps think of the evening? 
And what's your advice to anybody wanting to go fox shooting for the first time? At night, yeah. get a warm jacket. <laughs> 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 um, be calm and have confidence, I think. Yeah. And practice, yeah. practice, practice. Plenty yeah. of practice. Yeah. And I mean, is, it, is it how you thought it would be? Yeah, better actually. Yeah. I must admit, uh, uh, first of all, I thought you'd see the big fox coming in. It'd be nice and easy, a bit like, I suppose, you're deer stalking, but this is it's completely different. It's, you don't see the animal, and um, it's, you just, it's, like I say, I think you do have to have confidence in where you're shooting, and you will hit the target. Tim has been keeping a score of how the guys have performed. Roy has shot well, but has been a bit fruity with not keeping to his own target. There's good, we got Roy here, who's, who tends to shoot anything in front of him. He shot two eyes out of my foxes, he shot somebody else's target, so Roy's very, very greedy. And we've got the youngster as well, who has shot very, very well. So tonight, I think that the, uh, the winner is going to be the youngster, Tom. So well done, Tom. You thank shot you very really much. well. Well done, mate. Well shot. Cheers. Thank you. Well done. Super. Oh, it's not a competition! <laughs>